just bugging. Guys, I've got 1975 trike here. Yeah, my wires are all over the place. I've picked them up so I could roll this board. They're kind of just laying across it, but it does start runs. And now I just now made some spacers to go in between the larger diameter holes on these pedals. And I've got some brass brass washers there and the clip working. Um, one thing I noticed that I don't like is that now you have to, these are going to go through slots in the body. So you're going to have to remove this, which is going to attach the foot peg to it. I have to modify this. I'm going to make it a smaller bolt in, on the end of it. I'll show you. I'll explain it later. But anyways, um, I don't like that you can push this too far. It's got to stop for it coming back. But you could push this too far and then make the plunger leak inside this or push it too far and make it go to extend way past the o-ring inside the slave and make that leak so i mean the clutch you probably you know you're only going to depress an inch or so and you're probably not going to do it but the brake it needs to have some sort of a stop which i will probably drill a hole somewhere in here and put a stop there i don't know yet i mean i'm just thinking about that one right now then i don't like that these bolt this doesn't get that tight i would hate to every time you push the clutch it started working that bolt off you, like i said you're gonna have to remove these to get the body off so i was thinking about drilling a hole straight through this bolt like as if you put a carter pin on it and then going straight through the bottom of this metal here and tapping it out and putting a bolt a small bolt here with a nut on it so you can lock it down so then when you put the pedal back on and tighten it down to the right tightness that you're going to need where the pedal's not hanging up then you just push screw your bolt back up into this and it'll go into the hole of this bolt and then you can just lock it down it's just there as a safety so this doesn't back out and then when somebody wants to come remove the body they just lock uh, release the lock nut back it out you know a quarter inch or so and then this will come back out and uh and then when you put it back together of course lock it down because you don't want to tighten it too much and then the pedal has a resistance in it and it doesn't return but uh once i get somebody over home to help i'm gonna to slap the body on it and take it for a spin. I mean, I'll have to rig up something. We're still making the fuel tank. There will be eventually two fuel tanks, but we're just going to get it going with one right now. And there'll be two, and one will have the sending unit in it, and then it'll connect below across under, under the tranny so that they'll all be the same level. And uh, that side, you'll get the reading for the fuel in it, and it'll, you know, it'll have double the capacity, but the sending unit only needs to be on one side. All right, so that's what we're at to. We need to order a five prong light switch so that I can have high, low, and park for so you can have high beam and low beam because we're not going to have a you know push button or anything. You can just turn it on at different stages and you can have your park lights on, or you can have your headlight on low beam, or you can have your headlight on high beam. And then uh, he's going to locate the turn signals to the front, but I may just wire it to up in here where there's plenty of slack and he can put it up here later. But I'll wire up the tail lights. They said the body has Hento and a Maverick. They're going to get some sequential tail lights. So I need to get those because it's going to have more wires for the LED. And it has, I don't know, six or seven different functions on it. So you have different ways you can have the the tail lights clean so i've got to get that and then i'm going to lay this all out this just has all the legs and the and i labeled everything what that is and for the horn and for the front headlights so on it's just laid up here so i could uh, roll it around <laughs> sorry about that that was oh no it's okay i was just wondering if the curtain <laughs> Y'all right? Yeah, it's just uh, been working the late shift. And... Excuse me, I've been working hard. I'm getting tired. And I uh, mounted the fuse box right here. They had it underneath the body. I don't know why. Once I get that determined and then see this is where, this is my ignition switch. So I can determine how many wires I'm going to need. Fuel gauge, ground, chassis. Determine how many wires I do need to make my plug so that it can, this will be on the body. So that you can just unplug a plug and remove the body from this side. Alrighty. All right, guys, I've got one of the foot pegs on. 
it's just uh, rough right now because I'm going to clean it up, the weld, and uh, paint the bolt head to make it look decent. I'm going to clean that all up, make it really look nice. I like the skull on it. So that's uh, what I got there. Let's see how it looks when I get it on the body. I'm not sure how far this has to be screwed in until I put the body on it. So I think that'll work. If not, I'll do another, a different idea. But I got that big bolt there. I showed us known that a lot of the stuff was, I mean, a lot of the parts weren't available that somebody took it apart and over the years 40 years bits and pieces of it ended up missing i have to fabricate everything for it no big deal i will get it one way or another getting on with the wiring harness on it i decided to use the board for something else because it really took up a whole lot of space with the board and this and uh just ended up was going to go back and forth and i've done it that way before but i was in a big shop at the time and i've got another car that came back it has some really bad wiring in it and they've been needing to get the turn signal lever changed and it's got wiring underneath the seat on the passenger side that shorted because of the stereo somebody wired in there so yeah it's a it's a mess but so i don't have all that space to do that so i ended up going ahead and doing it and i've got a lot of excess here of course i'm labeling it all i gotta put a grommet in here um i'm gonna take this wire off of here that went to that's going to the sending unit on the body and figure why the hell did i put it there when i can just come off of this and then i'll just have to deal with disconnecting the ground and the sending wire from the body eliminate one wire there so i'm going to get on with this i got a new switch yesterday at b-dubs and i think it's for a van volkswagen van so i'm going to set it up where you can it's going to be on the side of the body over the shifter your legs up here and you can turn on the headlight and your running lights will go on at the same time too of course and if you need to use your high beam you just pull it out and put it back down you know if you're in the open road you can pull it out you get your high beam your running lights on and then you can go back down the high beam you just reach down you're gonna reach down for your shifter anyway so reach down so that's gonna be my next thing still got to get a turn signal lever it's gonna be something up here of course so i'm just going to like i did here with the flasher this will go to the turn signal lever this one here will go to the turn signal indicator light which would most likely be near the lever and so we're gonna have to wait for that then i'm gonna run some wires just uh, some short wires to show where they're coming from for the front turn signals which he's gonna have to find those so i'm going to get on with wiring the light switch and i'm waiting on some indicator lights to come in so i'll probably plan that and that'll that'll come off the park light yeah so I'm going to move on with that. Now, correction, the indicator light. One's going to be down here, key switch, an indicator light, and the light switch. The indicator light will either be for power on, really no, because the two lights are going to light up just like in your Beetle. So that indicator light should be when, when you have the high beams on or the lights. You're not going to be able to see it. It's going to be under your leg, but it'll just be to hide that hole that was there. Oh, and the next one will be the light switch, right? So, oh, and I got to run the oil pressure indicator light back to the oil pressure gauge and then i still have to wire in the alternator into the system and the indicator light on the body okay that's what i was thinking hey guys i'm really happy with uh how this is going with the wiring harness you understand i got a lot of excess on here i'm going to be next after i get everything done i'm going to i'm going to you know put it outside because there's not enough space in here but uh, i'm going to put the body on it and start figuring out where i want to have the harness on the body i want to fix some of it to the body but i do want to make sure that it's bonded real well and that it's not going to hang down and come down so i don't want a lot of this on the body so uh right here is my left tail light and you know the turn signal park light stop light here's a ground for everything back here because it's going to be near the, on the chassis and then here's the right tail light and then it comes around here and i was thinking about putting a plug here to disconnect the tail light to the body now it, how well it's going to fasten to the bottom of the body that's going to determine whether i do that i i just ordered some new some hold downs with adhesive but i think i want to you know and they come with screws so of course you don't want to screw through the fiberglass body so i think i'm going to go get some real good liquid adhesive like liquid nails or something some really high bond and take that whatever's on it the double stick tape on the back of it they say it's super adhesive but i don't want this to come back down on the on the chassis i want it to stay on the body so uh that's all the tail lights and everything that's going to come up here and then you've got of course uh, the starter and everything which is going to go to the 
the ignition switch. So I have about five wires over here and I want to make this plug where you're going to have to be anyway. So you have to come up here and you have to remove the pedals to get the, the body off and you have to remove the foot pegs to get the body off and you have to remove this, the nut here. One of them's a stud that sticks up and one of them goes down. So you can actually, it helps you put the body on correctly because then you just drop it onto a stud, put a nut on it, the other one you put a bolt and a washer down into it. And I'm still gonna make some, some pads here for spacers. And these are the simple things I've just been waiting till the end and tackling the things that take a lot of time and you can't really judge how long it's gonna take. So, and I, I'm figuring I'm gonna have three plugs to disconnect. And I want them in the area that you're already having to disconnect the body so it's simpler. And then when I come over here, I'm gonna have all my headlight, my fuel gauge, my voltmeter, my indicator light and everything. So I presume it's somewhere around 12 12 to 14 wires are going to be disconnected somewhere in this general direction like maybe underneath the chassis for the gauges and, and the headlights and everything so that'll detach and then one here and then one there so right now i got my light switch here and everything of course i don't have it hooked up up there yet and got my ignition here and it's still start so i gotta set this plug in here but like i said i don't like that there's nothing to prevent the pedal from going too far and then you know you can like on this side you can push the slave right out too far in the o-ring and then it'll leak so i'm gonna put like a piece of i'm gonna have to weld a bracket underneath here you know i mask everything off and then just have to touch up where i weld it but i want it to come out with an adjustable bolt right here with a locking nut when it gets where i don't want it to go any further i'll have something to make it stop or actually you could just just put a tab here see how far the stroke full stroke is and uh, I can't judge that until the body's on here so I can see if these hit the body or if they're out of the area or something I don't know so really coming out nice I can't wait possibly next week I'll be able to mock it up and put the body on it and take it for a little spin but I mean I'll be surprised if I get into second gear this thing is kind of wicked you know it's kind of scary at first <laughs> You know, I want to check it out and kind of slowly get into it, but of course uh, I'm in my neighborhood, so it'll just be see if it functions properly and if I can put it in reverse and for all the four gears and everything. And so stay tuned, this thing's getting exciting. It's been a long haul. It was brought to me in pieces with one photo. I was instructed to make it as original as it was. And, and I don't really know how it was other than a bunch of a box of pieces and stuff. And some of it, half of it was missing. So, but it makes it exciting. I'm not making a fortune out of doing the work on it, but it's the opportunity that's just amazing. I mean, where are you going to get the chance to build something so crazy like this? And and then everybody gets to check out what I'm capable of doing, so it's, it's, it's a great thing. I, I'm enjoying it. All right, stay tuned for more progress on the 1975 VW-powered trike, the Black Mean Machine. Hey guys, it's Dalton. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If so, drop a like, comment, subscribe, and have a just bug in a day. Stay tuned for part two.